Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's Resurrection Sunday Worship Service. I'm Rolling Elder Zach Cosner. I encourage you to download the bulletin for today's service so you can follow along. That bulletin can be found in the description below this Facebook video or YouTube video you're currently watching, or if you're on our website, it'll be a link below the video as well. Uh, I ask that you turn your attention to the announcements on the back of the bulletin. Uh, Ferncliff Camp and Conference Center is currently still scheduled to hold their uh, youth summer camps. If you're interested in uh, learning more about the summer camps, I encourage you to go to their website. And also, their Facebook page has been uh, uploading virtual tours of locations around their campus so you can have an idea of what uh, you might be signing up for. Uh, again, uh, you can find a link to those um, videos on our Facebook page and on our website. Uh, Senior High Youth Quake, speaking of Ferncliff, was scheduled to be held uh, April 17th through 19th, and that has been canceled. They are uh, currently registering folks for a virtual youth quake, which will be free on Saturday, April 18th. Uh, you can find a link to that uh, registration form on our Facebook page. Uh, if you are interested in uh, this past Good Friday's Good Friday service uh, by Reverend Tim Reeves, uh, that video is available on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube page, uh, which you can, you can find on our website as well. Um, earlier this morning, we posted a uh, service that was provided to us by uh, the PCUSA, uh, like a sunrise service. Uh, we encourage you to uh, check that wonderful service out after we are uh, done uh, with this service here today. Um, Neighbor to Neighbor of Jefferson County uh, likes to announce that they have moved to a three-day uh, uh, schedule. They will be open Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays um, to uh, service the community uh, during these uh, trying times dealing with COVID-19. Uh, speaking of uh, help that people need, um, Trinity Village uh, sent out an email letting everyone know that they currently do not have any infections of COVID-19 or coronavirus within the staff or the residents of the facility at the time of that email, uh, which was Monday or Tuesday of this week. Uh, what they have asked for is, uh, since they have locked down the facility, the uh, vending machines have gone empty. Uh, they are looking for donations of uh, snacks, uh, can, uh, canned drinks, or uh, monetary donations so they can uh, keep the spirits of the um, staff uh, uh, up. So we encourage you, if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to give uh, Trinity Village a call. And also, I forgot to mention, Neighbor to Neighbor is also looking for, still looking for donations, um, things that uh, would help them prepare sack lunches uh, would be encouraged to be donated to them. And again, if you are interested in either of those ministries, uh, you can contact Neighbor to Neighbor or Trinity Village. Um, speaking of donations, uh, Central Presbyterian Church has launched their online donations page. If you head to our website, www.centralprespb.com, you should find a Donate Now link at the top of the page that will allow you to make a one-time donation, make a uh, donation in honor or in memory of someone. Uh, you can also set up recurring donations, so you can have uh, donations taken out on a weekly or monthly basis. Um, you can do that with a check or um, money order or credit card, I believe. Uh, maybe you might not be able to use money order, but I know you can use checks and uh, credit cards or debit cards. Um, uh, one last thing I'd like to mention, the uh, governor of the state of Arkansas has decided to close the schools for uh, the remainder of the year. Uh, the session of this church has, had decided that they would follow the guidance of the governor uh, in, in regards to uh, whether or not we should open uh, in comparison with the schools. So uh, we will continue to not meet in person uh, through the middle or end of May. Uh, at around those, that time, the session will reconvene and uh, make a further decision on what we were going to do uh, going forward after that. And I believe that wraps up the announcements. Let us worship God. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Christ is risen. This is the good news. Once we were no people, but now we are God's people. Alleluia. Christ is risen. This is the good news. Christ is our peace, 
the indestructible peace we now share with each other. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, first using the, 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 the prayer printed in the bulletin and then silently. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that led to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and we abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new that we may know the joy of life abundant give, abundantly given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. As people born of water and the Spirit, we have died to the old life, and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured up, out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Today's Minute for Mission is the One Great Hour of Sharing offering. <clears throat> which uh, helps people in hunger, disaster, and developmental needs <clears throat> with developmental. Today's Minute for Mission is the One Great Hour of Sharing offering. It specializes in people with hunger needs who are in need after disasters and uh, the development of people. In Isaiah 58, the author is addressing a people who have returned to Jerusalem where the temple, God's house, was in shambles. I imagine it was a heartbreaking scene. And in that rubble, the prophet challenges the people not to rebuild the, the building or to restore their religious rituals, but to care for the hungry, the weak, and the vulnerable. The prophet called the people to become the house of God. We are called to become, as Isaiah promised long ago, repairers of the breach, restorers of the streets to live in. Together, we become the household of God. During this time of crisis with the COVID-19 pandemic threatening, we are reminded that the most vulnerable in our midst suffer first, most, and longest. One great hour of sharing has for over 70 years supported the most vulnerable among us. Because of our support, the church is able to deepen its commitment to serve. And in the days ahead, the staff of self-development of people the Presbyterian Hunger Program, and the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance will be working with presbyteries to identify and support essential congregational ministries, especially in anti-poverty work. The church's response to the present crisis will begin with the most at-risk communities across the country and around the world, as well as those facing spikes of racism in response to this disease. Through one great hour of sharing, the special offering of the PCUSA, we extend shelter to those who have no place to stay, offer compassion to those who have pain, be it physical, emotional, or spiritual, and we set a feast with God for those who lack access to enough with excuse me, for those who lack who lack access to enough food to eat. During these uncertain times, we depend on our church, faith, family, and God's grace to see us through. Please give generously to the one great hour of sharing. We are the church together. Let us pray. Draw all people together, gracious God, and make us your house. Let our gifts to one great hour of sharing create a home and a wholeness for people in need, especially those suffering from the impacts of the current crisis, so that the whole human family will know your love. Amen. You can give to the great hour of sharing uh, offering by texting the word SHARING, that's S-H-A-R-I-N-G, 
to 56512. You can also go online to presbyterianmission.org slash give dash O-G-H-S. Again, that's online at presbyterianmission.org slash give dash O-G-H-S. Links to that webpage will be found on our Facebook page and our uh, website, www.centralprespb.com. Our first reading this morning comes from the 65th chapter of the prophet Isaiah, beginning with the 17th verse and proceeding through verse 25. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy, and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Our second reading comes from the 118th Psalm, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 2, then picking up at verse 14 and proceeding through verse 24. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And finally, from the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning with the first verse, and proceeding through verse 20. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. 
The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings there or lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrapping, wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. The renowned British minister, W.E. Sangster, contracted an incurable disease that caused his muscles to waste away, his voice to fail, and his throat to become unable to swallow. Still, he continued in ministry right up until the point when his voice had gone and he could barely hold a pen in his hand. And on one Easter morning, just a few weeks before he died, he wrote a letter to his daughter. In it, he said, It is terrible to wake up on Easter morning and have no voice with which to shout, He is risen! But it would still be more terrible to have a voice and not want to shout. I thought about that a lot in the past week and wondered if in our present circumstances, how many people do not want to shout on this Easter Sunday. For in spite of the good news that Christ is risen, it feels more like we are living in a Good Friday world. You cannot open a newspaper or tune into the evening news without getting the impression that Darkness is winning over light, and that loveless power is triumphing over the power of love. The powers of evil rear their ugly heads, and the devastation they leave in their wake makes us wonder whether they have truly conquered God's very good creation. In spite of the empty tomb and Mary's glorious announcement that she had seen the Lord, it seems in this day and age that God's love incarnate remains stretched out on a cross. For we live in a world where the death toll from the coronavirus pandemic continues to climb. We live in a world where pain, suffering, sorrow, and illness 
wring out of us the motivation for living boldly, for caring deeply, and for loving passionately. Vitality and life are replaced by stagnation and death. Grief, rather than joy, seems to be the order of the day for far too many. And in the face of such feelings, it is difficult to believe that there are or ever could be glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. It's difficult for many to find any reason to shout. Gail Godwin called such grief a living ache. In her novel, Father Melancholy's Daughter, she talks about that living ache and says, the ache that you treasure, that unique wrenching ache that you hoard, you go looking for it. You don't want the ache to go away because as long as it's there, so are they, those who have died. And they go on living physically in you as long as the ache is physically present. I think it's safe to say that Mary Magdalene knew that living ache well. After all, only a week had passed since Jesus' disciples hailed his entry into Jerusalem with the words, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Just seven days ago, Mary's world was filled with excitement and expectation. How quickly and unexpectedly things had changed. On Thursday, Jesus was betrayed and arrested. In the early morning hours between Thursday and Friday, he had been tried. And on Friday, he had been crucified, had died, and had been buried. And perhaps through her grief and pain, Mary even wondered to herself where things had gone so wrong. Make no mistake about it, Mary was living in a Good Friday world where life was anything but good as she made her way to the tomb early on that Sunday morning. Perhaps she went to the tomb early for a time of private grief in the hopes of beginning that long and arduous process of coming to terms with the loss of someone she had deeply loved. It isn't difficult to believe that her tears were just below the surface. And by coming back to the tomb early in the morning, she could come back to Jesus and if nothing else, keep him alive in her heart. She could lose herself in that living ache where nothing ever changes. But when she arrived, she discovered that the tomb was empty. What surely must have made everyone in heaven sing praise to God only compounded Mary's grief. Resurrection had occurred. Life had burst forth out of the nothingness of death. From this moment on, life would be new and different. There were glad songs of victory echoing through heaven. Creation had every reason to shout, and yet Mary could not and did not recognize any of this. She was too intent on wanting things the way they used to be with Jesus as her friend and teacher, loving her and nurturing her and encouraging her. I think you and I can readily identify with Mary. We who are at the very beginning of what may very well be our new normal are always nostalgic for the good old days. We want to go back to the way things were before a loved one died, before so many got sick, before a friendship soured or our energy began to wane and our bodies began to give out, before the world around us changed and roles changed and families changed, before our faith got difficult and confused, before life itself became so hard. 
in such a place and time, I believe that the message of Easter is absolutely vital to each and every one of us. For it is in remembering and celebrating and retelling the good news of Easter that we as a church, we as a people, we as individuals find reason to shout even in the midst of the fear and chaos that have besieged us. For it is in telling and retelling the story of God's great love for us, of God's bountiful grace bestowed upon us, and of God's constant presence with us, that we find the wherewithal to face any and all uncertainty, trials, or tribulations. Remember how the Word of God became flesh and lived among us. Remember his table fellowship with outcasts and sinners. Remember that Christ can identify with our weaknesses because he was tempted in every way that we are yet without sin. Remember that Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us and that Christ prays for us. Would we understand why we have so many reasons to shout? Then we must first remember what Jesus told us when he walked the earth. The true greatness of Easter comes not in its newness, not in its unexpected glory, but rather in the fact that it reminds us that our God, a God of surprises, is always taking our expectations and upending them. On Friday, the people in charge, those who didn't want things upended because they were sitting on top, determined to stop Jesus. And they killed him. And in killing him, they believed they would no longer have to contend with those who looked forward to the coming of a kingdom whose rules for admission and the boundaries of whose fellowship they did not control. No longer would they have to debate what to do about a prophet who ate with tax collectors and rebuked those who gave fine dinners for respectable friends. The only thing is that Jesus was not through reversing expectations or upending the usual order of things. He rose on Easter. He lives and reigns and will return again. And so where people rejoice to be alive in God's very good creation, there the Lord Jesus may be found. Where people hope for his return in glory, there our Lord may be found. Where the anguished moans of people long oppressed rise up, there our Lord may be found where the heavy weight of injustice threatens to crush the spirits of God's own people, there our Lord may be found. Where people grieve or strive or thirst for righteousness, there our Lord may be found. And rest assured that on the front lines of this pandemic, alongside all who are infected, affected, or selflessly serving others, there our Lord is found. Because it was always in such places and with such people that our Lord was pleased to dwell. He devoted himself in life, death, and in life beyond the grave to establishing the kingdom of God, a new heaven and new earth that Isaiah prophesied about. And he can never be confined to the traditional, safe, and predictable. Inherent in the expectation of a kingdom that has not yet come is the continual discovery of new aspects of what Jesus requires of those who follow him. So if we would see Jesus, then we must seek him in the face of our neighbors. If we would see Jesus, we must seek him where hardworking women and men struggle to eke out an existence. 
if we would see Jesus, we must seek him among the littlest, the last, the lost, the least, and the left out. For just as Jesus foretold his impending death and resurrection as he walked the earth in Galilee, so too in Galilee did Christ commune with people in all their ups and downs, in all their celebrations and tribulations, in all their hopes and fears. It is in these same conditions and circumstances that Christ continues to meet us today. It is in these same conditions and circumstances that our Lord continues to bring life in abundance. And it is in these same conditions and circumstances that death is defeated again and again. And God lets out a glorious shout that says to the world, my will shall indeed be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that on this Easter Sunday and every day of our lives is something worth celebrating. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful message. I would ask now at this time that you would please uh, join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now uh, return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings. We ask you that you again uh, go to our website, www.centralprespb.com, and click the Donate Now link. Uh, if you are unable to, we, will, uh, we also ask that you uh, uh, send uh, your tithe and offering in to uh, the church through uh, postal mail. Uh, our address is 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. We thank you for all of uh, your tithes and your offerings. It is our right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord, rec Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend and every tongue shall confess him Lord to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys, our joys and concerns. Uh, we were uh, told this week uh, that um, Rose and Susie's uncle, Marvin Workman, uh, passed away, and we uh, send our uh, condolences uh, to the family of Mr. Workman and to Rose and Susie and Bradley uh, during this time of loss. Uh, we also ask that you be with all of the uh, those who are infected around the world by this horrible coronavirus. Uh, we also ask that you uh, pray for uh, uh, healing and mercy upon those who have lost loved ones to the virus in prayer for pray for protection and for um, wisdom to be provided to the frontline workers, the nurses, the doctors, uh, the first responders who are dealing with this on a daily basis. Uh, we also continue to ask for prayer for uh, the uh, Jonesboro area 
um, after being uh, hit with the uh, tornado uh, several weeks ago, they continue to not only have to deal with the effects of the coronavirus, but deal with the longer, uh, the uh, not longer term, but the uh, lasting effects of the uh, tornado as well. So I ask you that ask you that you continue to pray for uh, those people. We also ask that you pray for uh, Mr. Collins, Miss um, uh, Laura Cosner. Uh, we ask that you pray for Jimmy Mosley. Uh, we ask you for prayer for my coworker, uh, Cash McCarty. We ask that you uh, uh, please pray for um, uh, um, Cody Cockrell. Um, a good prayer, praise report on Cody. Uh, I've asked for prayers for him several weeks ago. Uh, he was in an accident with a horse. Uh, it kicked him in the face, and he lost several teeth, broke several bones in his face. Um, we got report this week that he was able to get the stitches out from his bottom lip, uh, that it appears that they're going to be able to save that bottom lip, and th that he will be able to return to work this coming Monday. So uh, we praise God for, uh, for that healing uh, for Cody Cockrell. Um, With that being said, let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we thank, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. We ask that you be with all of those who are affected by uh, coronavirus and COVID-19, the first responders, those who, uh, who have lost loved ones, and those who are affected. Uh, we also ask for a prayer for all of those people that we mentioned by name earlier. Uh, we pray that um, that you provide uh, healing to those who are sick and injured. Uh, we pray that you uh, provide comfort and wisdom to those who are in need of comfort and wisdom during these trying times. And we ask that you be with, uh, put a hedge of protection on those uh, who, uh, who need it from this horrible virus. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. <laughs>